Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of Say Your Peace, Black Women, Mothers, Martyrs, and Misunderstood Artist Talk Part 2. The great thing about having a part two is that we get a chance to sit down with Sarah Trail from the Social Justice Sewing Academy, Patrick Jones, and then we get a little more details about the Sankofa Bird and how we're going to tie all of this together when it comes to this exhibition. And I'm looking forward to the conversation that we're going to have. And all of your comments and feedback are definitely welcome. I want to thank once again the National Quilt Museum for providing this opportunity for Black women to display and quilt what matters to them. And I also appreciate all of the staff and hands that were a part of this process in executing this exhibition. A special shout out goes to Rachel Barr, Laura Hendrickson, Hendrickson Becky Glassby, and of course, Matt Collinsworth, our president, for being a part of this experience. Thank you once again. We're getting ready to jump right on in and meet Sarah Trail. And before we get started, I just want to quickly say that Say Your Piece is an exhibition that I wanted to make sure that we told the stories, we weave them together, uh, talking about social justice, talking about the history and the social injustices for Black women. I also wanted to include the quilting techniques they are so important and a lot of people ask questions about the quilting techniques and I wanted to dive into how do we combine all of these stories together and I think there's a very, very crafty way of doing so and I wanted to display this. I'm Stacey Watson. I'm the curator of Say Your Peace, Black Women, Mothers, Martyrs, and, and Misunderstood. I am looking so forward to sharing this experience with you and most importantly, I wanted to share the experience of going back and getting it and telling the story of Black women. And not only am I telling the story of Black women through quilting, I wanted to celebrate our achievements. So I look forward to you hearing about the achievements and celebrating those who may have experienced some injustices in society. Nicole, please go ahead and inform us about the Sankofa Bird. This particular quilt, Carry Me Back Sankofa Bird, is based on one of the ancient African Adinkra symbols from the Twi language in Ghana. The symbol Sankofa loosely translates to go back and get that which has been left behind. The this version of the Sankofa symbol is an elegant bird that flies forward but faces back and uh, it carries a precious egg in his beak and that egg represents the wisdom of the past that is being brought forward for the future generations. Um, in the right top corner there are three flying geese um, patterns. Those geese are flying back, backwards, and on the bottom left there are three more flying geese flying forward, and I chose to add those uh, to go along with the, um, the meaning of the Sankofa symbol, looking back as you, as you move forward, um, and I wanted to tie in the traditional um, quilting bird, the flying geese, uh, with my African um, elegant African Sankofa bird. Um, so those are some of the symbolisms that I have incorporated in um, my Carry Me Back Sankofa bird quilt. All right. Thank you so much, Nicole, for letting us know about the symbolism of the Sankofa bird and what it means in Say Your Peace exhibition. Right now, we're just going to go ahead and transition over to Miss Sarah Trail. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for being a part of Say Your Peace exhibition, Black Women, Mothers, Martyrs, and Misunderstood. Once again, I'm Stacey Watson. If you're just tuning in with us, we're speaking with Sarah Trail. I just want to go ahead and quickly jump in, Sarah. Tell us about Social Justice Sewing Academy. 
Yeah, so SJSA is a 501c3 nonprofit where we really make art with young people. We make art with the marginalized. We make art with those ranging from kids in juvenile hall to adults in local jails, to people in prison, to people in LGBTQIA, you know, houseless shelters. We, we, from high schools to middle schools, you name it. Um, from after school programs to, you know, schools in the suburbs. Um, and everything in between. We really just make art with those who don't traditionally have access to using and creating with textile art. Okay. And when we're talking about social justice, what does that mean to you in regards to quilting? So I, I would say how it transforms and like how it visually shows up is it's about issues and inequities or things they want to see or like the visions for the worlds they wish to create and live in. So I'd say it ranges from like highlighting injustice from like police brutality, stop killing people, to stop the effects of gentrification, to highlighting, we need to have more solar powers. Why don't we have solar powered, you know, roof tiles? And I mean, it can be the imagination of the future they wish to see, or it can be a critique on something that's currently happening. But really it's an all encompassing word um, of, of really just highlighting and, and just illustrating issues, inequities. Okay. Perfect. And when I'm thinking about social justice, can you just tell us how did this organization come about for you or from you? Yeah, I, I've, I've been sewing since I was four. Um, I had a lot of, you know, just parental support. I'm an only child, two middle class, you know, um, college educated parents. And they've always invested in my sewing learning. But really, as she started, um, the idea kind of started in 2012. I made a quote about Trayvon Martin and the quote world. Um, didn't really like it, to, to be frank. It didn't really get met with the same type of love and respect that a lot of my other quilts did. Um, so, you know, I kind of started pivoting and making a little bit more art quilts, but it officially became like a thing in 2016 when UC Berkeley gave me a seed grant to do a summer program with, you know, quote unquote, kids from concentrated communities of disadvantage. And the grant allowed us to buy a sewing machine, give them stipends at a fabric store, make a quilt, long arm it, machine quilt it, embroider it, start to finish, and then have, you know, an exhibit with, you know, snacks and all that. So those kids made those art quilts. And it was really a transformational six week summer program in the sense of, you know, you could see their self-esteem, you know, just rise to be able to make a quilt start to finish and then have the general public show up to a show is a really big level of affirmation that I think a lot of those kids hadn't necessarily received in other spaces. Awesome. I mean, it, it's, it's something that when we talk about social just, justice, you know, a lot of people don't really know that you can capture so many themes in this type of art form with quilting and how it can be represented. And when I think about um, what speaks to you and what speaks to me, I want to share um, my screen here about a couple of quotes that are in or share my screen in regards to a couple of quotes that are in my exhibition. And I would just like for you to speak towards these particular banners. So can you tell us the difference between the banners and the quotes for our audience who's un unaware? Yes. So the banners are from the Remembrance Project. It's basically like a 21st version of the AIDS quote in the sense of we're highlighting banners and people who've been killed unfairly. They've had their lives stolen from us. Um, the quilts are blocks that individual young people make, and we have an intergenerational community that collaborates with the young people to make community quilts, where a kid will make a block, an embroidery volunteer will embroider the block, they'll send it back, and then we'll have a sew day where other, you know, adult volunteers will help sew the entire quilt together, and then those get on display after a volunteer long arms them. But the Remembrance Banners are really just that. They're banners of people that we stories we've often forgotten and you know I think that in the era of social media there's a lot of murders that we all know Tyree we watched him get beat you know George Floyd we watched him get choked out you know Maude you know we, we heard you know that that kind of story the 911 calls but there's so many stories that aren't captured on social media and that shouldn't desensitize us or make their life less valued um this this project is really about highlighting their humanity and highlighting who they were not just the person in their final moments like we all know how George Floyd got killed, but how many of us know his favorite color or his kid's name? Who was he? Not how did he die, but who was he? This project really seeks to answer who are they? What were their favorite colors? What did they like to do? You know, who were they outside of, you know, the final moments? You know, when you Google, you can find out how someone got killed, but like, that's not really what this project is. It's not highlighting their death. It's highlighting their life. And mm -hmm. so in, in the project, you know, we have names and however you want to highlight their life, it's really just to highlight, you know, who they were, you know, what was their favorite color, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
Nice. So here I know that um, Lacey had incorporated, she chose the color palette of purples for her portrait and included uh, florals to represent her nurturing spirit. And she wanted to make sure that the legacy lived on. In this particular quilt, I wanted to make sure that I included different techniques when it came to quilting and talking about using paint in textiles. Can you talk about merging these uh, two mediums? Yeah, I'd say, um, as she says, very atraditional in the sense of we're not focused on quarter inch seams and like using a seam ripper or even using a pattern. We're really here to just make art. And I think mixing mediums, mixing whether it's applique, whether it's painting, whether it's embroidery, needle crossing, cross stitching, you name it. You know, I think in using, you know, paint on, on fabric, it, it can blend all the mediums. I think sewing is such a universal medium that you can encompass, you know, absolutely anything. Um, the way that she was able to paint the portrait and then applicate the flowers around it, I think really, you know, is a, is a testimony to not only her skill, but really the ability to, to cross cross medium as well. Nice. And I think I think that's also um, important when you talk about the youth. I think it's really important. So the youth knows that they are able to quilt. They have free reign as far as what to make, how to make it like there's there's it's OK to color outside of the lines and you are helping them explore this. And I think that is just absolutely amazing that you are extending their eyes to not only this art form, but at the same time, you're also exposing them to what's going on in America today. Uh, the, the last thing I want to ask is about uh, Kelly Stowe. Can you speak about Kelly Stowe here? Yes, Kelly Stowe was uh, a transgender woman murdered in Detroit. Um, I remember kind of reading some of the articles when we assigned the name. Um, and I think something that's really important is often there's monogamous threads of stories that like serve as a monolith. I think often people think trans women are forgotten or unloved or, you know, you know, like scum on America's shoe. And I think that that's often the case for a lot of stories that we've read. But I think something that really stuck out for Kelly is um, the last quote in the artist statement. Kelly's mom wanted people to know that she was loved just because she was transgender doesn't mean that she wasn't loved and that she wasn't cared for. I think Kelly was an activist. Kelly stood up for other people in her community. Kelly was a staple. Um, and I think that you know, the, the juxtaposition of not only the portrait in this block, but it also being the trans flag on the outside of the art. I think there's a lot of small elements kind of, you know, integrated in this. It's a beautiful, beautiful banner. Um, but I think that, you know, I, I think that we, we do need to do a better job. As Malcolm X said, you know, the Black woman is the most unprotected and disrespected group in America. The trans Black woman is even worse you know, like as far as further degrees of marginalization. Um, and I think that a lot of these banners, you know, really highlight, you know, Kelly was murdered due to anti, you know, transgender, you know, hatred, you know, so it's like, there's a lot of, you know, you're killed just because you're trans. And I think that just because it might not be le your lived experience, you know, threat to my neighbor's injustice, you know, injustice to my neighbors is a threat to me as well. And until we all, you know, see ourselves in common threads as, you know, the quilt of America and the fabric of America that we really are, you know, we, we've all got to care to, to end this problem, but um, beautiful banner. And, and even you can see the marker, a bit of applique, bit of, you know, um, portraiture and piecing. There's, there's a lot of techniques that went into this banner. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I get a lot of feedback when I'm uh, going through. So we have a portion in the museum where people get to write and share their piece about the pieces they see in the exhibition. And people are very grateful that these pieces are included. And I just want to say thank you so much for allowing us, the National Quilt Museum, to have your pieces and to represent the Social Justice Sewing Academy um, yet again. I know that you have um, had an exhibit with us before, and I'm glad that we're able to recognize the injustices um, and highlight them and educate and make people aware of what uh, Black women are experiencing in America. And uh, before we get ready to wrap up, I just want to quickly ask you, what are some projects you're working on? QuiltCon is getting ready to come up. So I just want to give you a chance to, um, you know, go ahead and share what you have, you know, what you're working on currently. <laughs> We have a young artist um, from like Nigeria named Samuel, who is phenomenal. He's absolutely spectacular. And we helped him finish his first quilt. So he made the quilt top. He sent us a raw quilt top, like what our kids make. And we you know, did the rest to add the three layers and turn it into a quilt. So it was definitely a transatlantic because it went from Africa to you know California. 
collaboration, but that quilt is going to be revealed at QuiltCon. Nice. And when I when I tell you it's his first quilt, he's he's beyond gifted. But when I say as a quilt community, this is someone we need to rally behind to support. I cannot wait for viewers to see his piece. It's called Crowned with Care. You know, I don't know where it will be at QuiltCon, but if you have a minute, look out for it. Um, we're even working on bringing him from Africa for the first time ever to America to be at QuiltCon. So if you see him, say hello, you know, let him know if you'd like his piece, but just recognize it's his first quilt ever. For someone's first quilt ever to be accepted into QuiltCon, that, you know, that not only speaks volumes, but also the SSA community that helped turn his piece from fabric and glue into a quilt. It got long-armed, it got bound, it got faced, you know, all the extra steps that, you know, we did behind the scenes to kind of finish that collaboration. But really, I think one of my goals at this QuiltCon is let's find him mentors, let's find him, let's teach him how to long arm, let's teach him how to do the things to take his piece, you know, and finish all the steps. But I think that um, I look forward to you meeting him, Stacey. He's really phenomenal. More importantly, he's really grateful to the community that kind of, you know, is helping him, you know, in, in the future ideas of mentorship and, and even in the helping of finishing of this piece. But when I say it's a phenomenal piece, prepare to be mind blown. I'm excited. Well, I just truly appreciate you being able to come on and meet with us, talk about Say Your Peace um, before we finally, finally go. Is there anybody that inspires you or has inspired you thus far to getting to where you are today? You know, I would say I, the entire quote community. I, I couldn't even name. There's there's so many, the, the long armors. One of them I'd, I'd say would be Martha. Martha is a SACL member who comes out to all our so days. And whether she's helping with technical questions or color, um, whether we have kids and, you know, it's like, hey, Martha, can you help us with kids? There's long arm, you know, volunteers that not only step up, but also share their machine to let a kid, you know, test it out and, and learn the waters. There's people that, um, um, in, cloth carousel, a fabric shop in Vacaville that gives us their space two times a month to sew. Um, there, there's just so many hands that really go in to kind of make what, what you see possible happen. Um, I appreciate, you know, MQG is always the MQG volunteers or what compiled for the most are onboarding volunteers, which make these pieces truly collaborative, intergenerational, you know, works of art, the workmanship that go into these, not only the banners, but the quilts and all of it, are really, it shows the level of care that goes into it, it shows. And I think to have such a selfless community willing to volunteer to help kids that they don't even have relationships with, it really just speaks to the heart of who's willing to volunteer and help out when it comes to SGSA. And I mean, volunteers, I think people don't really understand they are the heart, they are the foundation. If it wasn't for our volunteers, a lot of us wouldn't be where we are. So it's, I mean, I think it's amazing, admirable, um, you know, just what people giving up their time to do the things that they love, to tell the stories and share the stories of what matters to them. And I thank you so much, so, so much, Sarah, for sharing your piece and saying your piece today. No, oh, thank you. I look forward to seeing you at Kulkan. I will be there. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. And now we're going to turn to Ms. Patra Jones, who quilted maternal mortality three times higher. And I'm so glad that we are able to speak to you because there's so much going on in regards to social injustice and social justice. But here we talk about health care and how it affects Black women in America. And you share a personal story when it comes to uh, maternal mortality and how you felt. And I think it's important just to Give a little background. I had included in my exhibition here Serena Williams and what she had experienced when she was pretty much going through the labor process and childbirth. And she had mentioned in an article which uh, we provided the QR code being heard and appropriately treated was the difference between life and death. And I think a lot of people don't realize how serious maternal mortality is. Um, sometimes it affects everybody. And when celebrities talk about their experiences, now it's, oh, now we're paying attention. But this happens all the time. And this led you to quilting this masterpiece, this simple and powerful piece. And I want to know more about it. Everybody wants to know more about it. Patra, how did we get to this quilt? Well, I can definitely... Um relate to the issue of um, high-risk um, pregnancies um, because I was considered a high-risk pregnancy 
Um, actually, the term, which is an ugly term, I was considered aged pregnancy <laughs> because of uh, I was I was 38 when I was pregnant with my son. And so I was considered high risk from the very beginning. So I was actually able to get um, excellent medical care. Um, I had wonderful doctor and the staff that she worked with who um, who she would send me to for additional testing and monitoring and things like that um, were, was it was awesome. And I had a very good uh, pregnancy. I didn't have any issues whatsoever, you know, um, didn't even get morning sickness. You know, I was very, very, I was very fortunate and I enjoyed every moment of my pregnancy. It wasn't until later that I learned um, about the high mortality rate, especially in women of color. Mm -hmm. And it was just, um, I will say it was shocking, but not surprising, you know, because everyone is not able to get equal health care in this country. And so just always having that in my mind. Um, and when you approached me about like women's issues and quilting and things like that, that was the very first thing that I thought of. And I said, I've got to highlight this issue. And so this is the result of that. Perfect. So, I mean, that really speaks to what women are facing here in America. And when we start talking about how and how this piece speaks to you, how do you think it speaks to others? Well, I hope that in one, they recognize that this is um, a woman of color, an African American woman, and that that they also that they actually see um, the beauty in pregnancy, mm -hmm. and that um, every woman has a right to have a healthy and a, a professional and mindful and thoughtful birth experience. And I hope that when they see this, they see this woman, this African-American woman, as they would see any other woman in this country deserving of a healthy birth experience. Beautiful, beautiful. So I wanna get into symbolism here. And a lot of times when we're making quilts, we tend to th uh, weave our story through our threads. And in this case, it's within the headband. Talk to us about the headband. Well, I wanted to have a quilt that made a statement. I wanted it to focus on the woman and the body and the pregnancy but in a very simplistic and elegant way. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, um, before my locks was a hairstyle I was very fond of wearing <laughs> and um, used to wear headbands quite a bit. And I thought a headband would be a great place to put the message, mm -hmm. you know, and still keeping the quilt style simple and yet elegant at the same time. And so I thought it was important to make sure to put the issues of why the mortality rate is so high in the headband because people may not know. So, so here it is. Perfect. And I, I mean, I love everything about this quilt. Uh, talk to us how you chose uh, the color, your color palette and, and what it means to you here. I wanted it to, to keep it simple. Um, I I played around with a lot of different ideas uh, and just like doing the silhouette um, because I think the body of a pregnant woman is is very beautiful and very powerful. So I wanted to make sure that the body was seen and I did not want it to be hidden by clothing. So I purposely wanted to see this, you to be able to see the silhouette of her body. And so um, after kind of playing around and just getting inspiration online, um, I ended up coming across a photograph of a woman whose body looked just like mine when I was pregnant. And uh, I did do maternity pictures, but I never did this particular silhouette. 
And so this really spoke to me. So there was an uh, inspiration photograph that I did use, but I adjusted it to my needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's just such a beautiful quote and I'm just honored that we have this piece in the exhibition to showcase and display, not really, um, you know, a lot of people focus on maternal mortality and it affecting Black women. Yes, I want to bring that to the forefront, but just as you stated, the beauty in this pregnant woman, I also want to shed light on how beautiful pregnancy can be as well as motherhood. And, you know, your child, you gave birth to a <laughs> wonderful, handsome, <laughs> young man. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, cause we're not giving away anybody's age here, but we get, right. you know, so uh handsome young man at this point, and um, you're able to experience motherhood and have that great health care. And like you said, some of us are not able to experience that great health care equal, or even just there are so many inequities when it comes to healthcare and you highlighting this through this quilt, I think speaks to a lot of people, especially those who were just completely unaware that this was an issue or epidemic in the United States. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, I, sure. I really appreciate it. So I want to get to know you a little bit and I want to just ask you just a couple more questions before we wrap up. What inspired you to break into this medium of quilting how did quilting start for you you know it was just incidental actually um I've always sewn since the time I was old enough to thread a needle you know just did a lot of hand sewing and making clothing and things like that for my dolls I think a lot of sewers start that way <laughs> and um in growing up we had a few quilts in our home but I was never really drawn to them. And then um, as I grew older and I continued to sew clothing, I had a, a coworker who had mentioned quilting to me. And I was just like, hmm, quilting. And I was just thinking back to the quilts that my grandmother used to have and um, went home and just kind of started looking, looking up quilts online. And just kind of saw like there was like this whole world of quilting out there that I didn't really realize or understand. And I've always been a lover of textiles because I do some of my own dye work uh, from time to time. Okay. And so that weekend, I actually went to the fabric store and bought an instruction book on how to do the log cabin, make a log cabin quilt, mm -hmm. made it over the weekend, like the, the, at least the top, the quilt top and brought it to work on Monday and showed my coworker. And she was just like, what? <laughs> she could not believe that I had created this quilt top in a weekend. And so from then on, it was like, I've, I've been hooked ever since. And it's, it's definitely been a journey like off and on over the years. Cause I was, I was in my early twenties when that occurred. Okay. And so, uh, but now in these latter years that my son's gotten older and I have a little bit more time on my hands, uh, I've definitely just taken a deep dive right back into it again. Okay. Well, I mean, that's just such an amazing story and it's, it's so great. I, I think a lot of people are attached to quilting just based on, you know, when I hear about quilters and so is talk about how it goes deep and runs deep within their family, you know, stories of great grandparents, grandmothers, uh, people <laughs> sitting around the table and sewing. My mother talks about sewing and my grandmother on my father's side. Um, I have a quilt, like I had mentioned in our last artist talk right on my bed of what she quilted out of denim. And it's, it's just the way we are all connected. You know, it's kind of like the music, the fabric of the soul for us. And it is the music that we kind of listen to that connects us in a way through these threads. And I'm just been completely just overwhelmed with all the great feedback from these quilts being in this exhibition. I thank you so much for being able to talk to us about symbolism and what this quilt means to you, how it speaks to you and how it may speak to others. I just want to quickly ask before we get ready to completely wrap up, um, what are some upcoming projects that we can look out for now that 
you are in the National Quilt Museum and three times higher has been seen? Well, first of all, I want to say it has been um, surreal to actually have a quilt displayed in the museum. Um, I've gone there a number of times and I'm actually a member and to to see like my work hanging there is just like bananas to me, <laughs> but it's it's an amazing experience. And I want to thank you too for the opportunity. Sure. Um, and going along in this vein of the style that I that I did um, this quilt in, I'm wanting to do, uh, wanting to complete another piece in the same manner, but this time focusing on the black man. Okay. And I already have um, my image together and what I want to do. And I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be life size as well. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. going to be, wow. Wow. And I'll definitely be on the lookout for your work. I am so happy that we were able to connect. I remember us crossing <laughs> paths during quilt week. And next thing you know, a year later, we have an exhibit together. And it's, it's kind of ironic. We all made history at the National Quilt Museum for Say Your Peace, Black women, mothers, martyrs, and misunderstood. And I've been a part of a wonderful, it's been a wonderful experience. I thank the National Quilt Museum for providing this opportunity and letting our piece be shared and heard. And I, I would agree. And I just hope that they know what a treasure they have in you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. And thank you so much for being a part of the Artist Talk. Say your piece, Black women, mothers, martyrs, misunderstood. And the great thing about all of this is that we get a chance to say our piece, continue to say our piece. Yes. And it's because of all of you artists that allowed this to happen. So let's continue to say our piece and uh, see you at QuiltCon. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Before we completely go, I just want to once again say thank you to all of those who supported, attended, and was a part of this amazing experience for Say Your Peace, Black Women, Mothers, Martyrs, and Misunderstood. Thank you for all of our quote artists who came to uh, visit and who are also been a part of this artist talk and sharing your piece, saying your piece. It has been amazing. And once again, for all of those who do get a chance to attend, we have our open mic February 17th. Doors open at 530. I look forward to meeting you, seeing you, and hearing you say your piece.